the first section we're going to go through uh, Nava Gram mobility, Nava Air mobility, Perchance there, speed and complex environments, and multi uh, platform coordination. This will be done in indoors. And then we'll all move outdoors, and we have a couple uh, outdoor ex uh, experiments and comms, uh, speed and complex environments, and multi cl uh, platform collaboration out outside. Uh, so uh, excited to get this going. We have a lot to go through. If you have questions, we'll be able to answer a few questions between things, but we're going to be rapidly going through, be rapid fire through a lot of these things. Um, I give the students a lot of credit. These, these are, again, academic uh, experimental platforms that they've traveled on planes across the country, and they've been working hard to show them to you. So um, they've, I've seen a lot of uh, good things, so I'm expecting a lot of spectacular successes today. I'm also expecting a few maybe spectacular uh, failures as well as you, any good uh, as we're pushing the state of the art to do that. Um, but with that, let's get started. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ron Fearing from uh, California Berkeley, and we're going to talk about the. In Oop. Um, we'll, we'll get access to a lot of the the video. If you want anything afterwards, we'll be able to capture this and slides. I'll get you information. Yeah, I'd prefer not to do that. Uh, we're, we're live streaming things, but I have Form 1 clearance things to get that out. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ron, and he's going to talk about the innovative uh, jumper platform that you saw earlier in today's presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Brett, for the introduction. Welcome, everyone. I, I, my name is Ron Fearing, as uh, Brett mentioned. I'm here with uh, Justin Yim from uh, uh, UC Berkeley, and we want to talk about alternative mobility, alternative ground mobility for uh, mass platforms. And what we've been looking at is un trying to understand how we can build an agile platform which can handle uh, irregular slopes and irregular heights. And we want to do this uh, at a high maintaining operational momentum, as it were. So we were looking at what we're calling a vertical jumping agility, which is not just the ability to jump high, but the ability to execute jumps at a high rate. We call it vertical jumping agility, which is in just in meters per second. The state of the art in this is actually an animal called the Galago, which has a vertical jumping agility of 2.2 uh, meters per second. So to create a, a platform which has ver high vertical jumping agility, we made a robot called SALTO. SALTO stands for Saltatorial Agile Locomotion on Terrain Obstacles. And are you... Okay, we're, we're set, so we'll switch over to the uh, live camera, and what you're looking at is SALTO. It uh, weighs about 100 grams. It's got, we'll switch over to the live, live view. Ah. Oh, camera's down. We'll, we could just do, if people can see, I guess if, you, if we'd like, we could just proceed. Yeah, but I guess when you're ready, we we'll just proceed. So what the robot is going to do, if it works, works well, it's using uh, this external tracking system. It has no onboard sensing to know where it is. So we're completely reliant on this external tracking estimation. Go, go ahead when you're ready. Um, the external tracking. So it's going to go back to this uh, spot in the back there from which it's then going to uh, proceed forward, do a little bit of a run forward here, kind of a uh, cruising speed run. It's jumping at about half a meter uh, in height and about can do about one meter uh, forward pace. And then we'll go back to the uh, home position. And it's got a big, its target is the uh, soft pad in the back. And it's going to work its way back there. And uh, if all goes well, turn. So I should mention to maintain vertical attitude, it has an inertial tail, keeps controls pitch, and it has two thrusters, one uh, for controlling uh, roll and yaw. So it's just going to go to the center there and gradually uh, stop hopping so it falls over in a, in a gentle way. There you go. All right. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. Great. So let's switch back to the slides, and I want to tell you a little bit about the, uh, the research accomplishments uh, that we had that, it, that enabled this, uh, this demonstration. So we switch back to the slides. Okay. So as you can see, this thing is jumping. We have to be able to control energy, and we have to be able to, st uh, to store and control energy and release it th th at the rate we want to. And the, th the technique we're using there is called series elastic power modulation, which gives us the ability to control 
uh, power and energy. And uh, another one of the challenges is you have to release this energy in such a way that the robot jumps straight and doesn't just tip over. So, and you also need to be able to extract as much uh, power as you can from the limited uh, motor you have. So there's actually a, a special uh, mechanism which is designed, we call it, it's a, an eight bar linkage, which is designed in such a way that it satisfies all of these constraints simultaneously. Straight line motion, launches with uh, zero angular momentum. And it also uh, couples the, the motor into the foot, so it gives constant acceleration. All this to generate a very uh, rapid acceleration. The ground contact is about a tenth of a second or so. And we're going to, so I'm gonna, we're going to switch now. This is a much harder thing. So this is, these obstacles, the, the, I want to warn you ahead of time that if we don't track, uh, go ahead and run whenever you're ready. If we don't track perfectly well where the robot is with, with this uh, motion capture system, it's not going to hit the target. And to tell you, it has to be within half a degree to be able to get on top there. Oh, okay, so it took a... <laughs> Okay, so it did, it did partial, partial jump, that's good. Well, let's, I'll show you the, the real thing. Let's go to the, back to the slide. I'll show you we had success previously. So if the angle is off by half a degree, or a degree, it's gonna be jumping by half a meter off. So let's show you what, what it actually works well. So it's very sensitive to the motion capture system. We'll go to the next slide. Okay, we just, just play the, the video when it's actually uh, doing what it's supposed to. We can go ahead and play that. Oops. Oh, yeah, let's give that a play, there we go, all right, so it's, it's pretty sensitive, if it's off just a little bit, it won't, won't, hit, the, won't hit the target, okay, so there, it, it's working, working better yesterday. Okay, and down it goes. So we have a peak jumping agility of about 1.7 meters a second. We're getting pretty close to what the Galago does. Um, the big thing that we do need to add on this is the, uh, uh, some sort of onboard perception because it's just too, too sensitive to this, uh, the variations uh, in the environment that, that the motion capture system doesn't know about. Great, so that <laughs> it has worked, worked previously. So let me just uh, summarize the, 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 uh, the main results that we've uh, learned through this project. One is how to do controlled hopping on a, a variety of surfaces using all those techniques I told you we, we found out about. Uh, we have achieved high vertical jumping ability through management of energy and as well as the design of the mechanism. And we can do, uh, at the current state, we can do waypoint navigation using Vicon, though we definitely want to do this with onboard sensing. So I wanted to, sh and we think this will be useful to the Army and future systems where you need high maneuverability, for example, in uh, surveillance, surveillance or reconnaissance in uh, complicated terrain. So let me show you a couple other things we did in ag agile uh, locomotion in the lower left, uh, if you could start that video. We wanted to explore, well, what are the limits to legged locomotion? Is there, for example, a speed limit that's hard to go over? And we, we created this uh, robot called the X2 Roach, which runs at 49 body lengths a second. You can see it just uh, cruising cruising along there. Sorry, sorry, the picture is so, so small. But what we found out is that we actually, there is no limit to legged locomotion. As much power as you can put in, you can increase the speed. What happens is your energetic cost goes up because you have to pay for all the leg inertia recycling. But you can see that, okay. And the other, one, other thing we're looking at is in-plane maneuverability. So if you're on a very slippery surface, how do you turn quickly? And so we, as your system gets smaller, you can take advantage of inertial properties. So we can turn in place while running at, we can do a 360 degree turn in one second while running at one meter a second. So what this has shown is I think as part of the outcome of the mass program, building these small platforms gives you access to building very maneuverable, very agile systems, which we hope will be useful for uh, future Army, Army missions. So with that, uh, thank you very much for your attention. I don't know if we have time for questions, but otherwise we'll hand the mic off.